the Champagne <laughs> Rugby podcast. Nothing like an oh yeah boy to start a podcast. Yeah, just thinking of coming in hot. My name is Tony Lyle, joined <laughs> with Sam Smith and James McConey today for this edition of the podcast coming at you. I want to say live from the Export Beer Garden studio. but We're it's not, here live. It's not, I mean, we exist live, but no one's listening to it live. And this just said I've had this uh, beautiful sheet of paper phone across my desk, and there's actually a big announcement uh, to do with Export. And I'm going to read the announcement. It's pretty exciting, actually. They've, um, Export have just released a new beer, Export Ultra. Mm. It's low carb and apparently bloody refreshing. And the AC will be helping pour Export Ultra at DB bars before Black Caps and Super Rugby games around the country. And you can text Ultra to 3236 for details on where the ACC Export pre-games event will be. And they sound like a hell of a lot of fun. Um, Sam, you're a massive drinker. You're a, Huge, actually a raging alcoholic. I imagine you'll be there. Absolute alcoholic. Uh, just to be clear, I am an absolute non-drinker, mm. but even even this is tempting me. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good vibe, that's for sure. Um, but, hey, did you guys watch the rugby on the weekend? Yeah, um, got a bit of it. Yeah, I did. Actually, I was just thinking when you were saying that even this is tempting, you reminded me of that uh, 8 out of 10 cats does countdown moment where... I think Rachel Riley and Susie Dent are talking about swapping bras and underwear and the, um, all the panellists are going, oh, I can't handle this. And Alan Carr goes, even I've got a Sammy. <laughs> I was like, that's actually quite a um, – anyway, that's your, you've got a Sammy for, for the ultra. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, that's good. <laughs> I love, yeah. The, anyway. the, fact, the fact this is champagne rugby as well. We, talk, we, we, should be, we should be talking booze every week, and I'm glad we've done it. Yeah, well, I think the champagne is more to do with the quality of the rugby. And, geez, there was some quality of the rugby on the weekend. We'll start, I think, talking about um, the big match of the weekend, really, and that is the Super Rugby Opiki Grand Final. Oh, my gosh. What an absolute delight. <laughs> Oh. For, for, for my lovely Matatu. What a game. I'm so oh, yeah. sorry, Makoni. Hey, man, Matatu, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Naitahu, so I'm, I'm claiming some of yeah, it, but it is, it. they were Canterbury in cooler jerseys is what I called it because <laughs> those Matatu, they're sort yeah. of like a – what is it? It's, it's a turquoise, isn't it? It's something yeah, cool there. It's, yeah. it's quite a hard – I'm a colourblind man, so for mm. me it's hard to put – it looks predominantly grey. Like blue grey yeah. for my bad eyes. Yeah. It's, I can't say it's. Um, yeah. But I was was stoked to see them win. I'm a South Island man, just like you are, Sam Smith. Lovely mm. to get the W, and in kind of wild circumstances as well. Crazy, and it's that thing that we that the uh, that the Black Ferns did in the mm. semi final of the World Cup last year as well. Um, a bit of a kicking uh, laps at the end by a team that's been pretty dominant, yeah. given the win to, whoo, my team. Love it. Thank you. And, and I guess it goes to show when you've got a player like Renee Holmes and Matatu and Black Ferns as well, who can absolutely drill it from seemingly everywhere, yeah. Yeah. how incredibly valuable that is uh, in, in the women's game to be able to carve it up like that. And absolutely. God, she's from the North Island as well, so thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I, I think she's, I think she's from that. potentially the Waikato. Yeah. She is. She's played for Waikato. She's <laughs> played for the Chiefs. So I yeah. don't know how the hell this happened. I'm so glad that <laughs> she's, well, she's she's joining the ranks of fellow <laughs> South Islanders like the Whitelock brothers yes. and Karen Reed and yes. all those, oh, no, all those don't, lovely don't, people. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. <laughs> The la la la's the whole the list of uh, the, the, everywhere. Yeah. But um, having said that, you know, you can always say McCaw and Carter. They yeah. were always in the south. But this is the whole thing. I thought I watched that game and I always knew that Matatu had the, the, the base of that um, incredible championship, mm. multi championship winning Canterbury team. Mm. It's so tough to beat as soon as they sort of um, they dig in because they were 19 points down. Yeah, this yeah. is an amazing game. Chiefs mm. decided to rumble it up. They've had some big forwards and they were they were doing the trick. But the tries, you can't deny Matatu. One of their tries is a highlight reel, basically best try oh, I've seen amazing. in all Super Rugby this year. Yeah. The team try. There's a Canadian lock who did the first offload. Yeah. And then it was, um, uh, is it Duplessis was part of, was mm. in there? And then she... Her offload was a one-hander out to, you know, she spun out of a tackle and basically released the ball to R Renee Holmes. And then I was like, Renee, what are yeah. you doing? <laughs> but that, that missed kick, I felt so sorry for yeah. Tanika yeah. Willison. So totally. your heart just goes out to kickers in that, that situation. I don't know what we can do for kickers because now it just seems like the celebrations are bigger and the sadness is deeper. Yeah, and you have to think that she would have almost already been thinking about what's going to happen after I nail this kick. It was fairly regulation, and maybe that, um, I guess, got a better of it. But, yeah, you had to feel for your sort of teammates yeah. sort of get around there. And I'm sure she would have got over it fairly quick. 
Uh, hopefully. I, well, hope, I hope yeah. so. I think the top athletes do. It's the fans. We sort of kind of like, you know, get, get into this funk where we're like, oh, no. And um, and then they've got another game. They've got a, She's got to go. And, oh, she's been part of Black Fern Sevens. She's, you know, she's a weapon to Nika. And, mm. and to be honest, without her, um, the Chiefs wouldn't have got that far. Totally. She, she was... She's amazing. Eight the whole time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is the, I guess you'd almost say controversial thing, and a whoop, whoop, controversy alert, and the alarms come out again. Whoa. Um, what's going on with the Black Ferns? There's no scheduled games after, we had an amazing season last year mm. for the Black Ferns. The, Winning the, the World Cup. Now we're the biggest of Building all time. on that with a, you have to say, a successful season of Super Rugby Opaki, and now they're like, hey, uh, We'll get to you guys. We'll get. <laughs> hey, you know, do we want to do a press conference six months early to announce the new All Blacks coach? We'll do that. Yeah. But can we plan a Black Ferns game? Nah. It seems outrageous to me. When is the next Black Ferns game? I think that's the whole thing is that they it hasn't been it. scheduled in. Oh, my They're God. up in the air with what's going on. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the Northern Hemisphere, England have their schedule all worked out. They've got games going and going and going. And it seems like just when things were looking sorted and established for the Black yeah. Ferns, it's more of what was happening in the early days, we've got to sort it out. I totally agree with that. I think the um, the, the, the dif- difficulty is getting um, a travel of one of those top teams. So England mm. are, are the that, – that's the classic game. That game would sell out Eden Park, I think, okay. um, if, we, if we played England. Um, if we played Australia, it would still be big. And so we've just got to go, okay, let's build our own bleeders low, start the cup and get the rivalry going or the regular games going. And then we can, then we can sort of look to the other teams who we – really need to bring down, which are France and England. You know, that's, those, are the, that, that, the, those are the big four, aren't they, really? Yeah, I yeah. think the idea of starting the rivalry with the Wallabies and really building on that is something that is only – it might not take off this year, but it, you've got to look into 10 years' time. It could be something that, is, that becomes the big rivalry, yeah. and yeah. it's so much easier, right? You've got to have- Administration-wise, you don't yeah. have to fly to – Blighty to do yeah, yeah. it. They still call <laughs> England Blighty, right? Yeah, there have been games in Blighty. Yeah. The, um, I can't remember what I was going to say. Well, lovely Sam, podcasting there, Sam. Yeah, you're welcome. Sam, the thing about it is I didn't actually go to that uh, final and it's probably one of my biggest regrets, the World Cup final. I didn't have a ticket, but I was thinking, yeah. you know, um, there's, there's a, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. But looking at that atmosphere, I would actually like to uh, copy and paste that for every single rugby game in New Zealand. That's yeah. that's the goal. Um, and add, add a few more songs in as well. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I want the, the football singing, not like, you know, not like Who's the Wanker or You're Going Home in a mm. Fucking Ambulance. Yeah. Like just different songs to yeah. the yeah. normal football stuff. And if we can get that, then I think rugby will become a ticket that everybody wants to go to and... Um, and the Black Ferns started it, really. Yeah, that was well, the atmosphere. I, I was lucky enough to go to the game, and there was a few key differences. I mean, this has probably all been well documented by smarter people than me, but the few key differences were there was a great DJ before the game when everyone's coming in, so you ah. kind of wanted to get there early enough um, so you could have like a bit of a vibe. Like It was like an hour beforehand. The whole place was absolutely rocking. It was full. Everyone was in there, and I think the full thing um, points back to a different idea, which is having tickets not be... Two hundred and eighty dollars yeah, yeah. for every ticket yeah. because the type of like I, I brought my son in. We went and had a little uh, one-on-one date. It was great, but if the ticket for him to go was two hundred and eighty dollars and for me to go was two hundred and eighty dollars, which it can be for the All Blacks, yeah. you're like, well, we're just not going to go. So you get a whole stadium full of essentially well-off people with no children. It kills the atmosphere because everyone's sitting there thinking, I want to get my money's worth here. So I, I genuinely think the ticket price and the barrier to entry being so high for the All Blacks, it. it kills the crowd. It absolutely takes them out of it. You're not going to... Imagine taking a family of six to an All Blacks game where it's $180 a ticket. Oh, yeah. don't, don't get me started on All Blacks games atmosphere. There <laughs> is no atmosphere. The Rugby World Cup final in 2011 had an atmosphere, but it was just tension. Yeah. It was yeah. tension. And so, you know, it's like you could cut it with a knife because mm. it's just that moment where you're going, holy fuck, this could all go wrong yeah. and Auckland is going to burn. I, I watched that. Were you there? Were you there? No, I was watching it at oh, home. Yes. I lived in Wellington at the time, and yeah. I spent that whole second half just pacing around my lounge, and it was as tense as it sounds like it was yeah. there. I watched and that final in um, Bar Forte on Fort Street. It's a disgusting little <laughs> hole in the wall bar. We went to go to the cloud to watch it with everyone else, but there was 20,000 people there. 
and we were like, let's go somewhere else. Went to this tiny bar, disgusting stuff. There was a hammock in which I lay on to watch it. No one else in there oh, apart from immense. 20 of us. It was Incredible. the greatest place to watch it. And then we ran out onto the street and partied with everyone once we won. And I've never been back there. But Forte, um, what a place. I'd recommend everyone. I'm assuming it's still there and I don't imagine it's changed. Is that in Fort Street then? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, Bar Forte, you just got yourself a shout out. Get some Ultra on tap. Yeah, get some Ultra on tap. And I will say this, and this is not Export in an disparaging ultra. way, this is just a, a, a true examination of what happened that night is the bar staff, she had a G string tattooed on. What? Oh. Never seen it before, never seen what, it again, what? and I'm not judging. So you got it tattooed on right in front of you. I know, you could just see it over the jean. It was a tattooed, it was coming up, uh, tattooed. Well, are, you sure it wasn't a, are you sure it wasn't a whale uh, tail? Oh, yes. So um, we, there was a lot of examination that night. It almost <laughs> took more examination than the rugby game, to be honest, but we won't get bogged down in the weeds there. Can I just say that oh, I think I think a tattoo in the small of the back, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, oh, I know someone who might have one. Is it Josh Cronfeld? Josh Cronfeld. Yeah, Josh, he Josh he was got, my uh, yeah. rugby coach in Dunedin, and yeah. he has a big sort of longhorn Bull yeah, yeah. Um, down right. there, yeah, and the, on the lower back, yeah, and um, classy. Well, he really copped it for having that, to be honest. <laughs> All right, we can move along to some Super Rugby uh, now. The first game of which uh, James McConey, you and I commentated this game on yes. Friday night. It seems like yeah. an eternity ago, um, oh, and of course, all that commentary will be happening again this weekend. But I'm sure we'll punish you with some more admin like that at the back end of the podcast. <laughs> Let's not worry about that now. Uh, Crusaders versus Brumbies. Crusaders getting the win down in the worst stadium. In the world, and Sam, I imagine. How dare you? You know we've got that stadium because the other one got earthquaked away. Yeah, but it's still, it's, it was a year ago, Michael. Let it go. <laughs> Okay. There's a new one being built, obviously, and that will be a yeah, great Yeah, 2026. Stadium. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. It's going to be great. 2026. Can yeah. I just say great Vogel's reference in there? Yeah, I <laughs> know. It's that and Same Day David, I feel like, are the two yeah. uh, two, two ads that seem to live on. You well, know? one I often say with my kids when we're rolling around sort of fighting, oh, yeah, Mark, Mark, the car's on fire. Oh. And my wife was like, what's that from? And I was like, oh, I think it's some old ad. And I Googled it. It's a horrific drink driving ad. I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't get involved wow. in that. Don't go down a YouTube rabbit <laughs> hole yeah, yeah. with... Um, <laughs> Drink driving ads definitely stay in the memory, don't they? The, oh. the, the one-liners, you know. The, even the Ben Boyce, I'm just drowning my breakfast or whatever. Yeah. You know. I'm just trying to eat my bloody breakfast. Yeah, just trying to eat my bloody breakfast. Go <laughs> on. Yeah, it's, uh, it's grim stuff. <laughs> stop, stop looking at me, Nigel. Stop looking at me, Nigel. Oh, and they go, mate, mate, Dave. Dave. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Oh, that cuts deep. My brother-in-law's called Dave, and oh, Ooh. shit, we still say that to him all the <laughs> time. Anybody, Dave? <laughs> Dave's all over the country hated that <laughs> yeah. ad. Oh, and the same sure. day, David. If you call Dave, you're fucked. Because yeah. NZTA have got your number and they're like, we're going to run every David into the ground. And yeah. David Bain didn't do a lot for David. Oh, yeah. David's. That's very good point. Didn't do a lot for David's big Very D Bain. good point. Even the innocent ones. Um, can. Uh, you reckon, no, you reckon go, 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 go. no, I'm saying even the innocent ones out oh, there. Because not yeah. him, because he's definitely guilty. <laughs> We're all innocent definitely men. Definitely guilty We're all on the record. Me and Sam Smith. Um, uh, can I just say, uh, Crusaders Brumbies was a wonderful game. Finally, great to take a win from the Brumbies. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad it was my team. Yeah, it was a pretty impressive display from the Crusaders, it has to be mm. said. They kind of had it all over them. Um, really pushed it out in the second half and, yeah. well, showed those little Brumby boys who was boss. And, Sam, you and I were having a discussion about the fact that there were horses uh, Oh, yes. See, I thought they got rid of the horses. No, they still but have they the horses. there were horses still there. They're sort of just country They're just nice guys. workers now. They're farmers. They're Canterbury farmers just having a hoon around a field. No swords. No, they've, no ditched, swords. they've ditched the armour and now they're just regular guys riding around on horses. Just hanging they're, out. There no was uh, controversy, though, of a cheeky, uh, I believe, Nazi salute. The Nazi salute in the crowd. Which, which would like to stand oh, out. Oh, yeah. the Nazi salute. Oh, did you know what? When I saw that, I thought, holy shit, me and Tony were commentating the game and we didn't see the massively obvious Nazi salute. <laughs> yeah. But it's so in the background. I looked at the, the footage and you can barely make it, yeah. make out what's going on. And it's when Braden Enor scored or yeah. something like that. And I was like, oh, Stella okay. try, by the way. Uh, incredible cool try. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Yeah, it's 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 puerile, it's stupid, it's juvenile, yeah. it's... um. But I, th I think, like, um, I don't know, someone must have seen the Nazi salute and dobbed them in. Yeah. Because it was bloody hard to see. I, well, to, I didn't I'd watch it, it four times to pick it out. I watched yeah, it yeah. twice and didn't see it and then pretty forgot shit. to watch it again. But, yeah, I'd say pretty shit is an understatement. And I'm surprised that you didn't get your, you don't get your head caved in these day and age at a public place thrown around the old um, sea cow. But that's, 
neither here nor there. And that's not what we'll focus on. We can focus yeah. on the positives, which was that Braden Enor try, oh, an okay. amazing and, display of athleticism. And the amazing um, try by Whanganuku, like the first up one, beautiful, off the line out, around the back, Cody Taylor, he Lester bangs it through. Well, and I found out some great things about Lester this week. Did you know that his middle names? Yes, I do know. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, you do? People yeah, know this? All rugby Go. grounds. Keep going. Yeah. Keep Le- going. Lester Offa Kai Wales Twickenham Whanganuku. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that's an amazing name. Uh, mm-hmm. It's because his dad played in the uh, for Tonga in the Rugby World Cup in 99, which That's was correct. in Leicester when they played against uh, played against Italy. Italy. And then the, it was hosted by Wales, and then the next game was going to be against Twickenham, so he named it after them. But then his older brother, uh, Timo... <laughs> Got nothing. Got nothing, like yeah. literally nothing. <laughs> and that's going to be great when those two brothers play against each other next weekend, I believe. Crusaders minor Pacifica? Yes, that's right. Uh, n- you, you might next, have been a swing and a miss next there. Next weekend, we're playing the Reds this weekend. Yes, yes, I see what you've done with the old yeah. Ute's weekend. It's, yep, yep, it's yep, yep, Highland yep. is Moana Pacifica this weekend at Mount Smart, but we'll get into that later on um, as well. A, well, one thing about the, uh, I mean, I love that. They did that, speaking of same day, David, they did the same move, mm. uh, David, of, of with um, Lester Whanganuku. Well, it's off the line out, goes to Cody Taylor, gives it to Lester, and the, and the Brumbies are kind of sent this patchwork team, but then in response, Razor said, well, if you've got Patrick, I'm going to chuck children out there. Yeah. Jamie Hannah, <laughs> honestly, his Hannah Montana fan club. I'm yeah. going, actually, you're actually too young for Hannah Montana. Yeah. You know, that reference. He wouldn't get the reference. Yeah, yeah. But, he'd, be, he'd be more bangers era Miley Cyrus. Yeah. That would be his, his frame of reference for that one. Yeah, yeah. So, actually, maybe he is if he's the same age as my daughter because she loved Hannah Montana. And I'm, but Hannah Montana, I was forced to watch that because my daughter is, uh, well, she's 19 now. So, about Jamie Hannah's age. <laughs> And you know when you're just sort of going, I don't, I can't deal with any of these shows. But mm. you know, in the end, I actually had a lot of respect for Miley Cyrus because she was the main character. She had to play two different people, and she had to be funny. It wasn't just the sidekick who mm. was funny. So she kind of carried that show big time. Normally, you have a really sort of sassy friend who yeah. comes in and does all the lines. But I was going to say, thank God for SpongeBob because when SpongeBob turned up as a parent, I was like. Finally, something we can all watch. This is good shit. SpongeBob is a great show. It is really. Yeah, good. I feel like SpongeBob is the old and day bluey in terms of uh, television shows for kids that adults yeah. can watch and really enjoy. Yeah. My kids are going through a great moment right now. They just absolutely hate on Peppa Pig. They're like, Peppa Pig is for babies. I'm like, yeah, Harry, you're five. You are a baby. Yeah, Peppa Pig sure does suck. I'm happy, <laughs> happy to say that. You're a baby. <laughs> Yeah. How do you deal with it? Yeah. <laughs> Daddy Pig, his life yeah. is falling apart. The guy is, does not know how to run a household. He is a fucking loser. And you know something else? <laughs> David Bain was guilty, so deal with it. We know. I'm your dad, and I'm going to tell you some that. fucking truths right now. <laughs> Truth bomb's coming at you. Well, good to see the podcast has remained on track uh, today. <laughs> And speaking of um, blue losers, uh, we can move along to the Waratahs playing uh, James McConey, your mighty Chiefs, Hot. over in uh, Australia. And, mate, I watched the game. I thought for a second there the Chiefs were maybe going to get a, a big L handed to them, but they really uh, brought it back there in the end. We're in massive trouble, and you can tell you're in trouble when the Aussie commentators get super confident and you're going, uh-oh, because oh, yeah. they're loving the fact that the Waratahs are put, putting up a huge fight. But there's something kind of very cool and calm about the Chiefs at the moment. Mm. So, um, yeah, we had a, um, you know, it was Damien McKenzie's 100th, so there was a big reason to win it. But um, there's just a bit more clutch now, you know, just those little moments that I think in the previous seasons we might have um, shat the bed. It was just a nice sort of um, grubber through for Narawa, who's looking good on the yeah. wing. Um, Samasuni, just a bloody, you know, wrecking ball, speaking of Miley. Callback. <laughs> if we can do them, if we're allowed to do Cyrus callbacks, yeah, just one. Yeah. And actually encouraged, yeah. Thank you. And, uh, but the rest of it was just uh, that kind of collaborative effort when it looked a bit grubby and, and crappy, mm. and the Waratahs were definitely trying to grind out a win, win so they could do one of those victory laps in their budgie smugglers. Yeah. But we sort of we ruined it. We ruined it. And it was great for DMAC, who's been an awesome get. Thank you, Canterbury and yeah. Gore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, um, yeah, what, he's just, he's great. He's one of those characters that his, ex, because, because of his cheeky smile, he, uh, he's just sort of exploded out of the game and is bigger, bigger than the game? Is, am I saying that DMAC is bigger than the game? Well, I mean, that's a bit cool, you have to say, but he's got appeal. He's got global he's got appeal, a, yeah. doesn't he? Because the smile gets him, he gets him the pe- Peppa Pig audience. Yeah. He gets yeah. the people who sort of think, no, nah, I'm not into that, but I'm going to go from Peppa to DMAC, you know? Yeah. I also think because he's so little, 
such a little guy. Yeah. It's, you can kind of imagine if he can play for the All Blacks, anyone can. Like, this is yeah. a guy who could play under 85 rugby if he so chose, but instead he's like, nah, I'm going to play I for the All Blacks. Like one of the greatest teams of the, in the world, yeah. Yeah, and speaking of the I, commentators, James and Cody, I noticed you say when they get excited, do you think that yelling commentators, it's hard to say objectively because I, I guess I am naturally biased, uh, we as outrageously one-sided when New Zealand teams are playing Australian teams in the way that they talk about the team? Because I think they've just dropped the pretense, these Australian commentators, and will just actively say we and us yeah. when they're talking <laughs> about the teams uh, as if they're one of the support. It's like what I do when I'm watching the Highlanders play on the ACC commentary. It's not like the actual Foxtel commentary. It seems outrageous. The one thing with New Zealand commentators is there's always someone prepared to put the boot in if the All Blacks lose and start mm. to go, oh, I knew this was going to happen, pile of shit. Yeah. And they won't say it in, in, that, in, in that vernacular, but they will kind of, you can tell, they're sort yeah. of turning on, on them and as if to say, oh, you mm. know, this wasn't right. And they, you know, And so as soon as one of the co- commentary team is naysaying, then it becomes that moment where the, I think Nisbo, who mainly does the big ones, right, yeah. mm. he's pretty spot on. You know, like he will... He will applaud the, or, you know, like, call the opposition moments just as big. But there is something about, like, remember Jonah Lomu crossing in the game of the century? You betcha! You betcha! And it's like, yeah, Nisbo, he was feeling it then. Yeah. He was like, yeah. He, he, he was, was probably the chess game. He yeah. was in fan mode. And, yeah. and then that famous video of Nisbo calling the, uh, the final at the World Cup in Twickenham as Bowden Barrett runs to get that kick through from Ben Smith. And I think him and Justin Marshall are like shaking each other yeah. as they're running through. And Bodie! There's Bodie! A, I, the Go best. Bowden! Go Bowden! <laughs> Just when he forgot his job. Go Bowden! <laughs> it's funny, yeah. Turns into a 15 year old boy for a second. Go Bowden! <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, you listen to the other commentary and it's really uh, like the world rugby commentary and it's someone quite calculatingly. Mm putting it together, I think, as he runs and he says, and the World Cup waits, he scores, and then he says, is is his. And you're like, meanwhile, Marshall's going, go, (laughs) Bowden! Yeah, if it's an English commentator, it's like, finally a hack ahead, what I've been waiting for all day, yeah, scrubbering it, oh, yes, finally. Oh, and Bowden scores. (laughs) Bowden Barrett scores. Well, they always say they always call it a score, which always yeah. is weird for me. I agree. A score. <laughs> that's a great score. I'm, and I'm like, no, oh, I don't know, a score, it's either that's drugs or if you pull one night yeah, out of yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a score. It's a good score. The other thing that frustrates me relentlessly is the ground being referred to as the floor. They do this in oh. English commentary constantly. They're saying he got up off the floor, and I'm like, we're not indoors. This isn't a game yeah. of ice hockey. Why are you calling it the floor? I have never noticed that. I, I could see it. I and could see now, it in both your eyes as I said that, that this was not a relatable uh, no, topic. No, no, just when you said ice hockey, I was going to go, you could name any other sport with a floor. <laughs> and you went for ice hockey. I was like, oh, I'm with you. I'm, I'm ice hockey. <laughs> okay. You didn't want to go basketball? <laughs> you didn't want to go netball? Okay, all right. Well, screw the pooch there. Hey, but the team who didn't screw the pooch, the mighty Otago Highlanders. We didn't just go Otago, just the Highlanders. 57 to 24 against the Fijian Drua. Um, I'm assuming you both watched every second of this game. Like Absolutely. I go, Sammy. Uh, I didn't, actually. I was just trying to be cool. Um, <laughs> okay, but no, shut it was up, good. Sam. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Big scoring game. You love to see it. Just a bit of a blowout. Two teams who... You know, probably aren't going to figure at the end of the competition, just throwing caution to the wind and attacking from a million miles out, just trying to score as many tries as they can. 57 points yeah. for the Highlanders, which does a hell of a lot of good to our, before that, horrific <laughs> points differential because we had been battling for some time. So are we talking that's two in a row, right? Um, two in a row. For the Landers. It's basically the three-peat. Turn yeah. around, yeah. So um, they have them massively. T- they're heading towards an iceberg, the old. Uh, but somehow, they've uh, they've navigated their way to calmer seas. But the thing is, with the Landers, is when you look at the way they put it all together, it just became almost a festival, and it was a beautiful thing to see. But I also reckon that there's they need to make changes. You know what I mean? It's hard after a fifty-seven. Was it fifty-seven nil? No, no, no uh, that, that was the other game. No, that was the no, sorry, yeah, sorry, Keynes was. But after Definitely after no. putting fifty seven points on a team, normally you'd say everybody's safe. You know, you get a yeah, jersey, yeah. you get a jersey, Oprah shit. But <laughs> you've actually got to say, well, to be honest, there's just a few little cracks appearing and needs to sort of change. And I don't know, is it? I love what the Highlanders um, bring, but there's 
I think to play against the the big bigger teams, they have to do a little bit of a clean out. There's a young player in there called Cameron Miller mm. who scored this try and. They're talking about him being the future as a first five, and I'm going, well, this is the season, really, you know? If you're going to give him and give him a chance, you've, you've got to have him start games, if he's that good. Shout out to Gore as well, another one. Gore, Gore represent. Yeah. Yeah, and you did right. I mean, you've got Mitch Hunt down there who is running the cut. He's doing a good job. He's good, but if Mitch. you're looking for a head, looking for the future, you do need to start swapping yeah. it out a bit, making a little bit of a mix-up and giving him some game time in that 10 jersey. And who knows, maybe we will see that this week um, in the game up here in Auckland at Mount Smart Stadium where another great game was played on the weekend, but I don't know if we're, we're legally allowed to talk about the Warriors on this podcast. Probably not. The Mad Monday boys will probably come in here with bats and beat the shit out of us. <laughs> As league fans, I want to do... <laughs> <laughs> I, know, oh. I thought you say Guy Henwood as well. Yeah, no, yeah. He will, yeah, he'll destroy us. Yeah, he's an angry little elf. No, he's, <laughs> he's so passionate... Die yeah. about the Warriors that I saw his video where it's you should go on the ACC uh, <laughs> socials. He's done a video for I can't remember the song. It's like and he's just putting like Tavanga bus to Fanua Black that the Sean Johnson that 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 and it's like what the fuck am I watching? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Sean Johnson is one of the funniest names ever, right? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it doesn't get enough it's like people should be as talking about that every name. single day. Yeah. It's, Sean Johnson. It's, it's, it's shaved pubes. That's shaved cock. That's real yeah. funny. I mean, I'm sure he got it a, a lot in high school. Yeah. <laughs> and by the, I mean, I don't mean he got it a lot. I'm not talking about a score again. Well, I, I think he would have got it a lot at high school. To me, I'd say that he would have been, yeah. Sean, jo- Sean Johnson. He would have been, what do you call it, Ball King? <laughs> you get called Ball, Ball King. King. <laughs> Sean Johnson, Ball King. <laughs> Ball, Ball King, I think that's another, yeah. he did get it a lot yeah, in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that we don't talk about, as, uh, this is historical now, um, that Andrew Hoare was a hooker. Mm. Like, that's A-Hall, a big one. Yeah, that's yeah. a big one. And, uh, and Sam Whitelock is a white man who plays lock. Like, yeah, that's right. Well, you know, we should be, these things we should be discussing every day, pointing it out, being aware of it. Yeah, well, you know who brought up the a Hall was a hooker thing? The seal. What? Oh, the seal, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's no, what man. happened there. Hey, speaking yeah. of 59. And then Heidi Klum has went, yeah. you can't do that. To... Yeah. So, so divorced. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, she was, like, <laughs> yeah. she was <laughs> down there looking at the albatrosses and stuff and going, and oh, you man. are out. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fly Alvita off. Alvita Sain. Alvita Sain. <laughs> Sorry. Now that's, a, now, that's a reference that I imagine listeners of the Champagne Rugby podcast will definitely get a Project uh, Runway. Yeah. Um, I could do the other guy. Make it work. You know, like he'd just sort of Tim go. Gunn. It's him, yeah. It's him, yeah. Um, you mentioned this earlier, James McCarney, 59 nil. The, the Hurricanes against Moana Pacifica. Bloody hell. And I mean, if you're losing 57 to 24, as the Andrew did against the Highlanders, at least you scored 24 points. Mm. But 59 nil, it's a little bit of a bummer as I'm a big Moana Pacifica fan as I imagine most people probably are like totally. it's a great team to support they do great things like when they knock over big teams it's the greatest but to see them lose 59-0 is oh it's a real kick in the pants they're just in their establishing season right they're still a young team it takes a, it takes teams two years to get into the season into the, into Super Rugby as we saw with the Crusaders in 96-97 and then they'll win it for three years starting next year yeah. Moana Pacifica you heard it here first Really? Yeah. Do you think that the Hurricanes putting 59 points on Moana Pacifica, you know, they've had a couple of good wins. Are they the real deal? Could they go the whole way and win this competition? Or are they, how I predict, um, just going to blow out in the latter stages? I hope so. But the, um, the, the Canes are doing this thing where they're just totally flying under the radar. The Chiefs are getting all the, all the mm. accolades so far this season. The Canes, uh, what, they've lost one game? <clears throat> Is that right? I, I think the Canes are legit. So, I think so too. Yeah, they they, they have a. Um, I, I think they've got the. They've kind of cracked the code. Jordy said, "I want to play 12. It's mm. happened for him. Um, I think Josh Morby's a really, really good fullback. So they're not losing that much. You know what I mean? Like they've they've kind of. And I, I love all the young people that they bring through there. Uh, young players are, are just seem to be really good straight away. Peter Larko mm. scored that try yeah. at the end there. Mm. It was a 60-metre run, 50-metre run. I've got an obsession with fast forwards. Mm. Um, back in the day, I remember as Olivier Magna from France. I mean, mm. shit, he's quick. And then now we've got this Peter Larko, and I saw, uh, is it Miracle um, Fa'ilangi, who plays for 
Moana, he scored a 70 metre try against the Brumbies. So I, I need to put the GPS on these people and I want to find yeah. the fastest forward. I think it's a great call. Like, I want to know. You could do like a carnival day, yeah. get all the, yes. the teams to nominate their fastest forward and then make yeah. them do a 100 metre sprint and see who the fastest forward in the New Zealand rugby, Super Rugby franchises yeah. would be. And I'm, I think you could yeah. split it off to. Uh, tight five against loose forwards. Obviously, Lucy's having an advantage there. Agreed, agreed. And you know what? There, there's there's a, a forward for the Chiefs, Summer Penny Finau, who is once he gets the long stride in, mm. if it's the full hundred meters, I'd like. To, I reckon he's he's a chance as well because against some of the smaller ones, they they're blistering over forty. Yeah, but over a hundred, mm. my, my, my boy me. Summer Penny's going to go. He's like, he's got proper wheels. Yeah, it reminds me of um I don't know what year this would have been, but do you remember when Ben Franks mowed down Frank Halley? Uh, chased him in cover defence oh, yeah. and just got the big legs striding out with his giant boots and mowed him down, grabbed him by the neck, pulled him down, pulled him out and then stood up and absolutely sprayed the rest of the team. And I imagine it was something along the lines of, why am I chasing down a winger? Look at my massive frame. What is going on here? I'm a Franks for fuck's sake. <laughs> Look at me. That's- I've never seen this part of the field before. <laughs> he was very confused. Okay, you wingers, you're in the scrum. Yeah. Get in there. Get in there. See or, how your neck's like four, that. Yeah, get, get three of you to, to cover what I do. Observations I had from uh, that game and the hurricane season in general. Kenny Naholo, it doesn't fit in the Seven Nation Army song. I think we need to maybe yeah. change that up Agreed. a little bit. Kenny Naholo. It doesn't work. It, um, no. it doesn't work. They play Seven Nations Army when he scores in the Hurricane Stadium to get the crowd to sing it. Could be Eleanor Rigby. Eleanor Rigby. Kenny Naholo plays on the wing for the Canes and he runs really Really fast. fast. He's kicking your ass. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I think that's he's a much better. He's kicking your ass. Better. So he's kicking your ass. All right. Yeah, well, Di right Hemwood, you're about to get um, song. <laughs> James McConey is about to this show you how thing. to write we a song. We need the songs. The songs are here. <laughs> James, on the wall. James McConey's bringing the vibes back to stadiums throughout <laughs> New Zealand and the world. Also, scoring about 100 points throughout that game in conversions was uh, all black legend uh, Brett Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. What a guy. He's playing pretty well. He's a good player. Yeah. The thing is, he's always been hanging out with Rich Moonga. Yeah. <laughs> or um, someone who's a who's a, a much more established kicker. And he's he's great. Yeah, I can't help but think getting an All Blacks debut when almost no one knows who you are might end up hurting you in the long run. As everyone's like, oh, this dude's an All Black? Okay, let's see you go. Oh, okay, maybe we'll just wait a few years, get back in there, go around a few different teams. But he's back. I don't know if he's in the frame for the All Blacks anytime soon, but I thought it was great to see him out there, in the, the sort of ambiguous hair. I don't know what colour you call his hair, but that's neither here nor there at all. Oh, he kind of reminds me of like, and this might be a bit different, but how Jimmy Gopeth was playing and he was a fine player here in New Zealand. Then he disappears, goes to Europe, and then like five years later, he's like the European Player of the Year. He is, Jimmy Gopeth is still playing yeah. top flight rugby he's, to this day. He's an, he's an amazing player. He's, uh, I'd say he's almost the one that got away. He's a, totally. a incredible player, done incredible things in the game mm. and had to go over there to do it to get out of the shadow of, oh, I don't know, some dude called yeah. Dan, I think his name was. <laughs> There's a lot of players who've gone over to Europe and just become absolute champions. Um, Ehi West, mm. yes. who was um, yes. uh, Magpie, went to the Blues yeah. and then... At the Blues, they sort of said, no, nah, no, nah, we're good. And he went over and he played for La Rochelle, won the European Cup mm. with La Rochelle, kicked every goal. He was on the field. Mm. Um, and that, also in that team was Victor Vito yeah. and yeah. Tawera Kerbalo. But I think Ehi West might have been, of all the Kiwis, he's the one who started yeah. all the big games. Yeah. yeah. And took them from the doldrums as well. I think they were yeah. in like the second flight earlier when they first got over there and I think Victor Vito was a big part of grabbing that team by the scruff of the neck and saying, let's get out of oh, here. Oh, it's good, eh, hey, isn't it? Ooh, we use up their good years and then they go and yeah. do some good elsewhere, do some charity work over in Europe. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love me some think, I think I he's a lawyer, by the way. I think he's a, I want to say lawyer. Could be anything. Could be an yeah. accountant. One of those hard out yeah. ones. <laughs> he is a lawyer. And, oh, now, um, now not the first time. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. with my guns. Um, I'm just wondering, like, because Eho always being a, a ginger in, in New Zealand and even Australia, you know, there's always kind of, it's, 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 it's a tough existence. There's always a bit of ribbing. But I wonder if you go to France and there's some kind of like, Oh, Les Anges. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, bienvenue. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a got, celebration. It's like, oh, you know, like there's something just that, special. He's got that thing like a rooster. Like yeah. that's the, they've got that whatever that thing's called. And, yeah. and it's and they're like, oh wow, he's a he's a he's a cock like us. Yeah. 
Alayla Jeanne, do you reckon that chant from the stands? Alayla Jeanne. Alayla Jeanne. I like it. Um, we're not going to talk about the Reds versus Rebels game because, well, Who I didn't cares? watch it. I I watched some highlights of it, and uh, I because the, because it says Red and Reb in the top, I, mm. I just can't tell what team is which. That is a very it, it, they one need to sort that out. One team's yeah, in the I know, color here. But I just don't care about either of them. <laughs> yeah, the know, rib, Aussie versus hard. Aussie is always a tough watch. Yeah. That late Saturday night game, yeah. you're always going to switch over to league, aren't you? It was yeah. on. Yeah. In the, oh, I'll try. It was on no. in the sports bar that I was in, um, and lovely sports bar by the name of Shapiro's, and they have two giant screens either side of where you're sitting, and they had uh, the Rabbitohs mainly on one screen and the Rebels Reds on the other screen. And in the end, I ended up just looking at my beer. <laughs> <laughs> just seemed more appetising. Watching the bubble, bubbles float, float around and yeah. imagining your own game. I did want to, like, like uh, the Crusaders are playing the Reds this week, so I was trying to get a bit of a heads up, like, see who's new, who's... who's, who's and even then, I just didn't care. Doing some intel. Yeah, doing some Were intel. Were you going to send this down to the Crusaders? Yeah, I thought or? I'd text them. Yeah. I, I thought I'd, uh, yeah, yeah, text... Uh, at, say, least, at least to let them know. It would come through on the number, do not answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's been punishing them for years and yeah, years and years. Right. That's right. That's right. It'd be, it'd be quite interesting if they traced it to you and then, um, uh, you know, you were outed like on the project or something where you just suddenly you have a guest from the Crusaders and they go, actually, we're here for something else. And then, you know, you're hauled in and going, are, are these your texts? And it's just like this full, like MacGruber with the, yeah. with the number plate and stuff, eh? It's like in your Blaupunk stereo. And it's like and all, this fucking, all these texts. Oh, They're supportive, most yeah. of them. They're all like, I love you guys. Keep up the great work. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for being there so There would nice. just be one devastating text after they, uh, well, after they didn't make the final of Super Rugby Pacific where you're like, you've hurt me. Like, no one's ever hurt me before. Even then, I'd still be like, doesn't matter, boys. Next year will be our year. Yeah. Oh. Like, oh. oh, how could you how could you haul them it's, it's but it is too much. It'll be, <laughs> if if Tony's doing a sports segment and then they just suddenly pan away and go, What's going on? Why is um Why are they yeah, bring uh, Sam Smith Sam and Smith Stocks? Smith. Yeah. And uh can is that is that Scott Robertson with a bunch of eggs? <laughs> he eggs you on the face and laughs. I would television. let him do that. Well that's sort of another whole story which we'll leave <laughs> alone. It seems a bit like um I so, talk about that for years. Do you remember that time Razor egged me on li- on live TV? It was a dream. Could we make this happen? Yeah, I think I- that this is going to have. We're going to have to sort this out. Yeah. Razor egging, maybe the world's biggest Crusaders fan. Yeah, could be his last. I'm, act. I'm literally a one-eyed Cantabrian. Like I, I feel like I fully full full the vibe. I'm a bit of a dick about it as well. Like yeah, I can all, tell. All, all, yeah. cr- all Crusaders fans are. And for those who are listening, Sam, Sam, uh, just just I think you need to. Provide some more context for this one eye can tabry. Oh, thing. I'm legally blind. I'm 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 I have seventy five percent vision in, in my right eye and twenty five percent vision in my in my left eye. So I'm I'm if when you add that up, I'm legally one a one eyed man. But you yeah. still have the eyeball though. I do, I do. You're gonna have <laughs> to gouge things. it out like Bill the yeah. Butcher and Gangs in New York if you want to impress me. Yeah. Um, and the last game of the weekend <laughs> is the, the Blues versus West. Call yourself one eyed, there's nothing. <laughs> Uh, Eden Park is a Sunday Arvo game. How good the Sunday Arvo game? I say this every time, just because it gets me all jazzed up. I, in my head, I always romanticise, like, taking my kids along yeah. and going. I've never actually got around to it, but I love <laughs> it being available to me. Yeah, it, no. was, it was great for, for the, the nine people that went to the game. It was a... Uh... Oh, shots Ooh, fired! Yeah. Oh yeah! I, it was only because I was there the week before, and it was it wasn't full, but it was it was pretty packed the week before. But um, yeah, against the force, they uh, kind of big weekend of events, though, Sam. You can't go to everything. There was a one day international on true, at the ground at Saturday. True. The Warriors are playing on Sunday at the, basically the same time. The Blues are playing. People can only go to so many games, so maybe just take it true. easy on the I Auckland. Will, sorry, I will pu- take it easy. Sports going easy. public. Who's in charge of the lines? There's so many lines. Are like even Mount Smart had a football game Thursday night, rug, uh, rugby game Saturday, rugby game and, Saturday. Rugby, and rugby league Sunday. It's yeah, funny. Oh, yeah. some, I mean, rugby to rugby league, the lines aren't as big an adjustment, but I feel like cricket, there's a lot of... Shout out to the lines person at yeah. Eden Park. Oh, but, uh, they, they shout was, shout out to the post people at Eden Park. The post people. The game hadn't... Well, it had finished. We were still doing interviews. I, I was working at the Black Caps game. We were still doing player interviews. They hadn't even left the field. And these guys are putting the posts up already on the field. They put them on a little tractor. If you've ever wondered, now this is really um, inside... The, the eye here, but they get a little tractor and they make up 
the post full length on the ground and then they bolt it into a hinge and they get a tractor, put it on the roof of the tractor and reverse the tractor up until it becomes erect. If you if you're listening on the on a podcast just, you know, and you can't see Tony, he's making Wanking movements. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. yeah it's like they do a, sort of beat it off until it yeah. becomes fully chubbed. That's what happens. Yeah. And when so he said erect, he st- he just stared <laughs> right into our souls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was disturbing. <laughs> but no, that's it. they did make some posts. Um, they erected them, and um, there was uh, what else happened? Oh, that game. That was the Blues game. Was the one game I didn't actually catch, and it was mainly because I saw a review from um, uh, Waisaki Sotutu, Mike Hoskins Sotutu's dad, and it was just like. Something like, that was dire. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, sounds like a bad game. Sounds like a bad game. And he loves rugby. Yeah. And he was bloody good at it. And he obviously went along to support his son and went, there's a game. <laughs> nah. No, another great game. Yeah, always tough when the parent of one of the players is like, yeah, that was trash. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a tough sell to the rest of the viewing public who yeah. might go watch it at a later date. I felt like he was talking about that. Maybe he was talking about a refereeing decision or something. But I was like, okay, sounds like I don't need to watch it. But they made hard work of it, which is mm. – that's where you go, okay, uh, it was a Western force, wasn't it? Yeah. We dressed yeah. as Taranaki, coming mm. to Eden Park in a beautiful sunny afternoon. Um, yeah, there were, there's a couple of good moments, but that's all, all I'll say. I haven't seen much of it. Incredible try um, if you want to catch yes. it as well. Oh, yeah. Probably one of the better finishes you'll ever see, yeah. leaping up, grabbing it, kind of putting it. Behind his back in the air, taking a, I think it was a crossfield kick, James McConey, which you're notoriously oh. anti. <laughs> no, for advice. <laughs> well, yes, I am anti them, and they should be shut down at every opportunity when there's an advantage. Yeah. I want to see something more um, exciting. I want to see enterprise. I want to see innovation. I just want to see something else. That was um, the crossfield kick. Definitely exciting. He, it was tra- AFL style. It was AFL. It was. It was Mere millimeters away from the from the touch. I don't know how you do it when you jump. The, the AFL players can seemingly do it on, on command. They will leap and then in the air, sort of like salmon, and then gain another foot in height. It do, doesn't make sense. The laws of physics are thrown out the window. It was a mid ear contortion, wasn't it? It from, really was. Uh, Jacob Raitamatavuki Neepkins, who um, G Lane was calling the napkin, <laughs> and um, and he was. Um, that that was. It's actually good to see him play because I, I think he's one of those guys. You know, when they've, you've got a, a team that's already made the final, outside backs mm. who are All Blacks or near enough, and then it's like quite often that other guy. You know, yeah. And Staller Heem's bloody good for them too, mm. uh, Bryce Heem. So good to see uh, Jacob get some minutes and do something spectacular. It was spectacular. Ratamatavuki Nepins is Nepins. It's a tough. Name, there's just a lot, like a lot of name. If you do a hyphenated name, which I feel like we're getting more of, maybe this is a generation of the 90s divorced parents. A lot of people getting divorced for the first time. So a lot of people taking up dual names. But that's, I wonder where it's going to stop because now you've got, you know, pl- players uh, like him, you know, you've got your yeah, garden bashups. Um, I'm not sure if that's from divorce. It might just be split, joining two families. But then what happens if then they go on to have a, a, a family yeah. where there's two names? We can't it's just have six names in 20 years. It's madness. Can I just say, it's not the divorce that gives you the, 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 the name, is it? I think, like, once you're... Once you're yeah. it's, it's, the, it's, it's when the, you've the got marriage, the... Yeah. It's the marriage <laughs> where the kid goes, I'm going to use both my parents' names. Or the parents kind of come to a, a peace agreement of, like, okay, both our surnames are going to belong to this kid. But then where does it stop? Can you go well, triple that, or quadruple I hyphen? Think, I don't think you can. Yeah, maybe it's not divorce. That doesn't make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, sure. Lisa Marie Presley Jackson when she was married to Michael Jackson. It's it's so yeah, many Washington. famous people's names right in a row. Lisa Marie Pre- I mean, Lisa, the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Marie. Marie uh, Antoinette. No, Lisa Marie Presley Jackson is, <laughs> is my famous person there. Uh, Presley, obviously. Uh, Elvis. Yeah, yeah. And Jackson... Is uh, Jackson Garden, Garden Bashup. Bashup. You were just yeah. talking about him. <laughs> Jackson Garden Bashup, of course, the famous person. Well, there's the Breakers um, guard, Will McDowell White, and um, he's done, you know, use mum and dad's surname. But I think it might be partly because his dad was a really famous um, Aussie rules guy. And sometimes, you know, you just want your own identity. Yeah. You don't want to be, oh, son of bloody that guy, you know, the, well, yeah, maybe the that's, Geelong is that, Cats. Is that legion. to, sorry to harp on the Garden Bashups, but I wonder if that's a part of it as well. I mean, He's combining two famous rugby names there with, with Gard and Bashup, really combining mm. them both, being like, I want everyone to know that I have amazing pedigree and yeah. should make higher honours. Yeah. Daryl White, son of Daryl. 
<laughs> anyway, moving on to breakers stuff. Um, uh, it's usually Aussie names because they're all fancy as fuck over there, and so the, the, mm. quite often the hyphens is carried on through years. And so there's always an Adam Ashley Cooper or Sam Scott Young or something, and they're they're all sort of bankers or they're heading into the city. Yeah. If they want to play rugby, it's fine, mm. but there's definitely a really an, a well paid job for them. Yeah, um, in the in finance, waiting for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean That's Ashley Cooper like. sounds like the name of a hair salon or a lawyer's agency or something fancy yeah. to start when, with. When James O'Connell Cooper and Adam Ashley Cooper were playing at the same time, oh my God, I, I, used, I used to have like, I had to stop and think for a minute to make sure that I got got those those ones right. And then, and then I, I once saw them at, uh, at the movies down in, uh, down in Wellington when I lived there. Really? I was hanging out there. We were in line for the movies. Uh, they came up. They were holding a rugby ball. Um, it, was, it was James O'Connell Cooper and Quade Cooper. Wait, said, who are you talking about? Who's James, James O'Connor? James, you think of just James O'Connor? James O'Connor. You think of James O'Connor? I am. Do you know what? James you think you're counting the O as a separate know, surname. James O'Connell Cooper is a friend, separate friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing in the movie with movies with Adam Ashley Cooper then? He was there with Quade Cooper, and that's why I've confused that, it. You're, you're thinking of Quade Cooper and Adam <laughs> Ashley Cooper, and then no, you've just rolled no, no, your I'm friend thinking, into no, this. No, I'm thinking of James O'Connor. And Quade Cooper, and I've combined them together to make Adam <laughs> Ashley Cooper, who really? wasn't there at all. Anyway, we're in line for the movies, and they said, is this line for the movies? And I thought that was real funny. Can we um, add the um, <laughs> Zach Galifianakis meme where the, all the equations and that go over his face and stuff? Oh, my God. And just, just, and, but, but put Sam in there. I just had it. a total realisation. that uh, You know who I saw at the up. movies once? I was um, going to the movies, and I saw uh, Carl Urban. And he went and oh, bought wow. a single ticket to Doom, which he is in. He's, He's a star of Doom. <laughs> Shit. At, at, at St. Luke's Hoyts. He, he said one ticket to Doom, and he got the ticket, and he walked in by himself. This is an, this is another thing I have to always story. think about. Keith Urban, uh, Carl Urban is the actor who was in Star Trek. He was in Doom. And Doom. And Keith Urban, have he's I on just the said voice. the same thing? He's the voice. Yeah, he's cool, he's cool, Nicole great. Kidman's husband and on The Voice. Yeah, Are right, you talking right. Doom as in the sand? No, Doom as in, um, oh. as in shake it, baby. That could be Duke Newcomb. But we're getting... A computer. <laughs> massive computer yeah, St. Luke's, Hoyts is, or whatever it is, Village is... Yeah. There's one really big cinema there, which is kind of impressive, and the rest of them, if you know, there's, I don't know, it's, it's not, it, it's not the most appealing place to watch. <laughs> but I used to be a movie reviewer, so I, I quite liked finding a cinema where there weren't too many people around. So I'd, I'd go Westgate, out, out west, mm-hmm. oh, watch the movie, you know. I mean, take if we're a few t- notes like a new, <laughs> and I, then just to link this back to to rugby in a vague way. Do you know that in Blenheim? In the 1999 Super Rugby final between the Highlanders and the Crusaders, played at Carisbrook, the party at Tony Brown's, uh, the Top Town Cinema 3 in Blenheim showed the rugby live on the big screen. That's and everyone amazing. dressed up in there, because that's Crusaders country, everyone dressed up in their largely Crusaders outfit and went and watched the movies and watched the game at the movies. Incredible. Amazing stuff in 1999. God that's knows a, how they did That's it. a good idea. Um, I remember going in there and they got the... Um, aspect ratio wrong with this, with this movie and because there's only two of us in the <laughs> cinema I went and complained about it and I said they've got it wrong and they pretty much came in and said do you guys want us to start it from the start are you okay to and we went nah just carry it on from wherever and they offered us a refund if you get a bad aspect ratio you qualify for a refund wow incredible I, I watched The Hobbit in London and halfway through the movie just stopped and they go yeah it's buggered. <laughs> <laughs> um, see you later. And so we just left. And they didn't give us a refund? No ref. That's no bullshit. Yeah, it's in the first no refund. The well, I saw the end. And to be honest, that was, it was still there's three hours. There's another two hours of oh. that movie left for you to watch. Sorry, I just want to tie up a loose end. What, what's James O'Connell um, Cooper up to these days? Uh, I, I think he's a lawyer. Uh, he, used to, <laughs> he used to date my friend Simon, and uh, they're no longer together as of about a decade ago. So um, I hope he's doing well. He's still yeah, my friend. Cool. Uh, nice man. Well, I, I hope, hope he's gotten well. over that terrible breakup. Yeah. Um, um, of over a decade ago. Yeah, I hope so. He's and I hope Andrew Simon's funny. doing well too. Yeah, he's doing great. Yeah, great. Also, to hear. Him in a while, All right, like it's time him. for a what I like to call a uh, speed wrap, which is where we go through rap. Sorry, where we go through uh, the games <laughs> that are happening this weekend oh, shit. and show what we are hoping to happen them happen in them. I mean, the first game, obviously, I would like the Highlanders to win. It's Highlanders minor Pacifica at Mount Smart Stadium, seven oh five on Friday night. Go the Landers, they're going to make it three in a row, and oh yeah, boy, I'm looking to let them. Good luck for the three-peat. I think it's probably probably on the cards. Now, when I say three-peat about the Highlanders winning, it sounds endearing and like I'm supporting my team. But when you say it, it sounds like you're taking the piss, Sam. <laughs> I am a little hey, bit. If you're going to say when I say three-peat, at least say when I say three, you say Pete. Three. <laughs> Pete. Three. <laughs> Pete. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, and then <laughs> after that, 9.35... 
uh, New Zealand time. God knows we're in Australian time over there in Queensland. The Reds play the Crusaders. Yes. It'll be fun. It'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. Don't know anything about the Reds. Um, they play usually in red, which yeah. means the Highlanders might have to break out their away kit, which I'm assuming would be rainbow. Uh, are you talking about the Crusaders? Yeah. They, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's kind of white or grey. Yeah, they're just they're no mucking around in the Crusaders. I'm always there. a bit nervous when my team wears the away strip. Mm. We've got a feel, we've got a good home, uh, home thing. And I, I believe I'm talking about the fact that uh, teams tend to win more at home than away. Didn't, so, and the Reds, the Reds, the Reds, I'm not saying they're your bogey team, but they've got a pretty good history against the Crusaders, you know? Like they, they don't fear them. At, at in, some, in 2011, you know? like yeah. in that final where we played no home games in Christchurch, yeah. the Reds are the ones who destroyed that fairy tale ending yeah, for yeah. us. So, Is it Will Genia and Quade Co- yeah. Quade O'Connor well, Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> Quaid O'Connor Sorry, I just got angry Quaid thinking Cooper. about Quaid my O'Connor. friend James O'Connell Cooper again. Uh, then on uh, Saturday, uh, Endura Rebels in Fiji again. God, I hope Fiji keep that Fiji record alive. Yeah, pump. The, hopefully they pump the Rebels. Chiefs and, Blues though. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's goodness. The ga- gonna be the oh, game yeah. around. Huge game. Has to be said, undefeated Chiefs playing the Blues who have been looking great themselves down at FML Stadium. And are you going to make the trek down to the Hikui Down State Highway 1 to support the team? I was thinking of doing it. I just don't know at this stage. Um, it's a maybe for me, but I'll, I'll definitely be watching that one. The Chiefs, um, that's, that's just so tantalising, isn't it? Have they named the teams yet? What day are we in? No. No, it must be tomorrow no. I'd say the teams will be named. But you're right, tantalising is a good word. I, yeah. I'm pretty much a partial observer of this game. To, like, vaguely support the Blues because I love here. My son likes them. But I'm just keen for a great game. It's, I think it's definitely the most exciting game of the round. And Jesus, like, all that's as far as the eye can see, really. I, uh, my thing is that I think I want the Chiefs to lose, which means the Blues will win. Just to just to keep points things in check to make it better for my team. Sam, that's something no one I can Tabrian would ever say that they'd like to see the Blues win. I so. know that's why I'm in a quandary. Um, there could be um, a really extra tantalising matchup between uh, Sam Kane and Dalton Papali'i mm. because oh, yeah. he, Dalton Papali'i's been the guy who everyone goes shit. He's a champion. Will be. He's got to play. But this year, Sam Kane. Holy shit, yeah. he's played well. He's kind of like gone, I'm back, baby, mm. and I'm doing the, I'm winning the contact, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, winning the contact is the second most important thing in rugby. First most important thing is don't Songs. Fuck, oh, songs yeah. equal with don't fuck it up. Right. Mm. Don't fuck it up is the kind of thing where it's like there's an overlap and they don't give it or, you know, they yeah. just drop the ball. It's like, oh, you fucked it up. But... Winning the contact, Sam Kane versus Dalton, that's pretty cool. Um, there's other massive matchups yeah, as really well. Is. But um I, I like the the matchup of D Mac and Bodie Barrett yes. in that 10 jersey, just to see what D Mac has got going on for him because you know, he's kind of the future, right? B Mac uh, uh, I'm getting confused with all the B's. Bodie is almost winding up, you know, he's gonna go overseas mm. for a couple of years at the end of this year. And that number ten jersey is kind of available. So if D Mac is like, hey, wanna see what I can do in that jersey against the incumbent or one of the incumbents. I'm excited to see that. And also, Bowden hasn't actually run that much this year. He's just been kind of like the, the playmaker, running the cutter, doing all that sort of stuff. But we know his running game is elite. Imagine if he cuts loose uh, on Saturday night, then d will have to respond. You know, like it's just like, mm. okay, you got mm. that? Then it's like a dance battle. You know, it's like that. But the, the <laughs> way it is... <laughs> Finish the podcast on that. No, yeah, we're going to carry could. on. No, we're going to carry on. Wrap it up there. There's some other game. The guys are. <laughs> there's a Brumbies Waratahs game, which I won't be staying up for. And then on. Oh, I read. I heard a thing that um they they've offered uh was it, is the Brumbies coaches offered uh wait the Waratahs are going to the Brumbies the Brumbies are going to the Waratahs Waratahs are going to the Brumbies the Waratahs are going to the Brumbies the Brumbies coach has offered the Waratahs a beer. Every fan that goes, a beer. Because apparently last season, in Tars Week, which is normally a big week for them, it's their big matchup. only 13 people travelled to watch the game. <laughs> which isn't very many players, very many... Um, so 13 fans. away fans went. Travel to, yeah. So every sure. away fan that goes gets a free beer. Yes. That's so a great deal. I'll that's do a, that. That's a great deal. I would do that. I hope that the Waratahs fans turn out uh, and go to the cultural capital <laughs> of, I would say, the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Canberra. Canberra. What a place. And then on Sunday uh, in Wellington, the Hurricanes play the force, who I feel like have been on the road for about six weeks at this stage. They must be keen as to get back to um, 
I know, the but, west oh, of Australia. Hold here. on a second. The Force, they've been dragged to Invercargill, which is fine, but they, they're definitely the Sunday afternoon team. Eden Park, they got a bit of the bright lights, and now Sunday, Palmy. Palmy. Yes. Force of the team. Where you go. Who do we take to Palmy? Yeah, in the cargo and Palmy in the same tour, and I'm not being disparaging to either of those places, but I guess I am because what a couple of shitholes! Oh. <laughs> Don't end the podcast there. They're the kind of place that need a hurricane or whatever the force symbol is to take over. Are those are those symbols the same thing? Uh, the they're just... very swirly. I think the force is almost like a yeah. birdie looking thing. Can I say I've never I've never been to Invercargill. It's on my list with a, with a few other you know great cities where it's like, yeah, will I ever get to Invercargill, Montreal, and you know Berlin? Mm. And the thing is like, but Palmy, I quite like. Yeah, I, something I about Palmy. Palmy. It's like something about Mary. Something about Palmy. Yeah. Make do the remake. Yeah, there is a good energy there. The and you see those turbos fans. Like there's a good rugby yeah. vibe there. You got the university culture, mm. uh, or uh, is university the right word? Uh, some sort of form of higher learning. <laughs> Ma- <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say here. You get a diploma uh, more than a degree. But no, geez, I'm really going to get hate mail from the people in Palmy. The Palmy's there. there. I, I actually also like Invercargill. It's not so bad. I learned how to drive a digger there once. Oh. Lifted up a. Uh, basketball on a digger and dropped it on a cone. But I think we have to leave wow. it there. That is um, all the right. allocated time because okay. someone's about to storm in here and beat the shit out of us with <laughs> right by the name of the Mad those Monday league podcast. Quick, let's get out of here. So uh, thanks very much for listening. We appreciate it again. Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio. Get one of those Export Ultras into your gob and we will catch you next week when the Highlanders have completed their three-peat James McConey stands with. Thank you very much for joining us. James has already left. Champagne Rugby for life.